Yeah, you certainly have to tip your hat to the market here. In a week where the news wasn't that great, to respond at the end of the week and go out at the highs, I think is certainly impressive. With pretty good breath, too, you're about five to one on the upside today. I think the bigger picture question that investors need to ask themselves, though, is, you know, today's the 13-month anniversary off the low. When you look at the other two examples where we've seen markets rally this magnitude in that first year off the low, off the 82 low and off the 2010 low, that this is about when the market began to pause. So just going into a weaker seasonal period, I do want to take my foot off the gas here just a little bit, knowing what the historical comps tell us. American Express shares under pressure after a revenue miss. Kate Rooney's got those details for us. Hi, Kate. A Wolf, a slump in travel and entertainment spending on American Express cards, overshadowing some better than expected earnings. Amex revenues did miss. I spoke to CFO Jeffrey Campbell this morning. He highlighted strength in goods and services, as well as online and e-commerce spending and domestic travel and entertainment. He says, quote, finally hitting an inflection point. In March, for example, global spending on travel and entertainment was up 40 percent versus February. But international restrictions are still hurting those lucrative cross-border payments. He says Amex will likely get back to pre-pandemic earnings by early 2022. But business travel could take a lot longer. Guys, back to you. Kate, okay, thanks so much for that one. Uh, Sylvia, what's your take here on Amex? So, you know, Amex is expected to have a 15 percent drop in, e in EPS and, and also a drop in revenues. They beat there, which was really good. Um, they got a bump in earnings because of the, the one billion of uh, credit loss write off. You know, they signed up two million users. They have the cabbage program, signed up 14 million new vendors in China. They're getting into crypto with Falcon X. But overall, you know, consumer spending was up 11 percent minus t and &E. I think that when borders reopen, travel picks up, entertainment picks up, they get a lot of that money back. You know, I think it's actually on sale. I think it's a good buy now. And the reopen and, you know, sort of continuous good news around vaccines, stimulus checks, consumer spending, you know, retail sales in March were just absolutely outrageous. So I, I would think that that will benefit MX this year. They're up 22 percent year to date, 75 percent year over year. I, I do like the stock here. It was a tough quarter for consumer products giant Kimberly Clark. That stock sinking today after reporting a quarterly miss on both the top and bottom lines also lowered guidance. The maker of Huggies, diapers and Scott's toilet paper delivered its worst sales performance in at least a decade, citing inflation, continued shutdowns and fallout from consumers hoarding toilet paper last year as reasons for the weakness. Kimberly Clark reducing its full year revenue growth forecast and cutting its EPS outlook, which was expected to happen, but the numbers did come in worse than originally expected. We hoarded too much toilet paper, and so we just aren't going out and buying it. And that goes for Kleenex tissues, Scott's, Cottonelle. Those are all of their brands. P&G uh, also raising prices like Kimberly Clark, but Kimberly Clark getting hit on margins on some of those higher input costs. They also had supply chain shutdowns. Chris, the stock's down, down 6%. A lot of the macro themes we talk about impacting them. How, how do you view a stock like this and, and broader consumer staples, which did benefit so much from all of that hoarding and is starting to feel the after effects now? Well, I think it speaks to the idea, just from a chart perspective, that bad names and bad trends, when they print bad numbers, they get punished. And, and, and that's what's happened here. And you look at that, the broader staples group, I do think what is telling, despite kind of a risk-off tape over the last five or six weeks, Staples really didn't outperform much of anything, and that's with bond yields coming lower. So we always ask the question, is the group responding as it should? You had bond yields come in, you had um, some risk-off tone, and the staples didn't work. We think they're a sale here. We think Kimberly Clark uh, is a sale uh, as well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.